Hello everybody, Armor Trolder. Here's a quick question. Who likes turbo motors like 351 Windsors? Well, everybody, right? Well, before we get to that, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, go to all the corners, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. Today, we're going to look back at the Big Bang 351, the Big Bang motors, you know, where we take a junkyard bottom end, add ring gap to it, put heads cam and intake, and then add turbos and try to see how much power the stock bottom end will make. Well, I did that with a 351 Windsor and things didn't turn out very well. You can go ahead and take a look. I'm going to put a link up later on. You'll be able to take a look at that video and see what happened. But what I want to do is look back, not really at the turbo stuff because we know what that did. I want to look at the NA power output. And not only that, I want to compare it to another junkyard 351 that we ran with similar kinds of upgrades and we made a lot more power. And the reason that I want to do that is I think that that motor was kind of doomed to begin with. It just didn't make the NA power that it should have given the modifications. So what we want to do is look back, figure out what it did, figure out why it did it and how we can make it even better. So when I do redo the Big Bang 351 Windsor, we start out at a higher naturally aspirated power output. And so any kind of boost we add just makes more power. Okay, guys, as I indicated in the introduction, I want to look back at the original Big Bang 351. For those of you guys who are not familiar with it, what a Big Bang motor is, is we want to find out how much strength the stock bottom end actually has when we add lots of boost from a turbo. And the way that we do that is we get one from the wrecking yard, we run it, make sure that it's okay, and then we take it apart, put ring gap in it, put it back together, and then put a decent set of heads and a camshaft and an intake manifold on it so it makes good power NA. And then we start adding boost, usually from two good sized turbos. And then we turn, keep turning the boost up until we find the strength limit of the stock bottom end. We have a good tune in it, we have good intercooling, we have good fuel, we have all of that. So what we're trying to find out is what is the strength limit of the stock bottom end. Now, we did this previously on a 351 Windsor. It was a late model hydraulic roller block. I'm gonna go ahead and put the, or, or was it a late model block? I'm gonna go ahead and put the link to the video up right here and you guys can take a look at it. But <laughs> as a spoiler alert, when you try to control the wastegate with two good sized turbos on 351 with the throttle on the dyno, it doesn't work out very well. So there are a couple of reasons why I want to redo this. One is because I blew the motor up on the dyno. I'm to blame for that. The other thing is this motor never started out making the power that I thought it should have. So the reason that that's important is I know it's a stock bottom end and we're just trying to add boost to it. But if we can start out at a higher naturally aspirated power level, Anytime we add boost, it just multiplies what's there. So if we start out higher, we can end up higher at a lower boost level. Less boost is always good. So if we can get to wherever the strength limit is on the 351 at a lower boost level, that's just going to be beneficial. Also, it's going to lower the, the torque number, <clears throat> which is really kind of the deciding factor. I think that's what, probably what is going to break a rod. But what I want to do is we're going to look back at the naturally aspirated power output. And then we're going to also compare it to another 351 that I did and kind of figure out why there's a discrepancy there between the two power outputs. So let's jump right in. This was our 351 Big Bang motor. We'll go ahead and look at our description. It was a high, late model hydraulic roller block from the wrecking yard. It had a set of uh, Airflow Research 205 heads on it, which way more cylinder head than we needed, obviously, for the application. We put a, a crane a camshaft in it, 552-563 lift, a 228-232 degree duration split, 114 degree lobe separation angle. What we were trying to do is find a camshaft that fits uh, available piston to valve clearance. For the intake manifold, I chose a TFS R upper and lower intake manifold, a 75 millimeter throttle body. We used a Holley HP management system. We ran inch and three quarter uh, long tube headers on it. And this was the, basically the naturally aspirated baseline for the twin turbo kit. So run in this manner NA, our combination produced 409 horsepower and 407 foot-pounds of torque. And I thought that these numbers were really low given the modifications. I mean, we know the cylinder heads will support 600 horsepower. A 228 cam is enough to make more power than this. We've done that many, many times. In fact, we normally we can make near 400 horsepower on a 302 with a 224, 232 camshaft, that, that extreme energy uh, 274 cam that we run a lot. So this seemed really, really low. Um, 
you know, we did obviously, <laughs> despite this, we we ran boost on it and it made over 600, and then we ran more boost on it and made over 800, and then we ran more boost on it and it made over made over a thousand, a thousand forty-seven before things started to go awry. So it kind of did what uh, we wanted it to do, but it's not doing what I honestly think one of these 351s is capable of. So now I want to show you another combination that we where we upgraded one of these junkyard 351s and we'll kind of compare the two and go, hey yeah, maybe there's something here and we could definitely make more power. Okay, so this is another Junkyard 351 hydraulic roller block to use as a comparison to the one that we tried to do the Big Bang on. And this will illustrate what happens when we make modifications. And on this particular application, it made quite a bit more power. We want to try to focus in on why it did that. They're both basically the same starting point. So this was a factory hydraulic roller. We took the factory EFI stuff off of it and ran it carbureted. So we took a stock uh, 94, I think, um, Junkyard 351 hydraulic roller deal, took off the EFI setup, put on an Edelbrock RPM air gap intake manifold, a 750 Holley, put headers on it. Obviously, we put a distributor in it. It was an MSD. And then we ran it and optimized the air fuel and timing on the otherwise, you know, stock long block stuff and run in this manner that the 351 produced 254 horsepower and 352 foot pounds of torque. So it did exactly what we expected. We've run a few of these and this is kind of where they seem to be. No, notice the the hard fall off after 5,000 RPM. I think things probably running into valve float. You know, you don't have any idea what's going on with these junkyard motors, how hard they've been run. But here's an interesting comparison. This is what happened. I'm going to go ahead and move myself here. This is what happened when we added an Edelbrock top end kit. Now we already had part of the top end kit in place because we had the Edelbrock RPM air gap intake manifold and then we have a, had a 750 Holley. But let's take a look at what else the Edelbrock top end kit had to had to offer here. So it had CNC ported Edelbrock 185 heads, which are good heads. We've, we've run them a few times. We had our RPM air gap and 750 Holley. And then the Edelbrock also came with a camshaft, a matching cam, you know, matching camshaft for the rest of the components. It was a 573, 582 lift, 235, 239 degree duration, and 112 degree lobe separation angle. And honestly, looking at those cam specs, I'm kind of surprised that it fit stock available piston valve clearance. I honestly don't even remember measuring it. Uh, we reused the factory lifters. We used um, comp, uh, the, the low dollar cast, but still full roller rockers. We had to change the push rod length for the... I think for the for this combination for these particular heads, ran it with the same headers and the same carburetor, and we just dialed the carburetor in. I don't think it took much jetting actually uh, when we were running this thing. But run with these modifications, it produced 460 horsepower for 59.7. Peak torque checked in at 435 foot-pounds of torque. So the combination did really well. I mean, it picked up over 200 horsepower. So it was a, it was a big jump up in power. And the interesting thing is I want to overlay now. We'll overlay the NA power curve of the 351 that we use for the Big Bang motor. And you can see it's making quite a bit less. So it made 409 versus 460. And it was down everywhere. So the <laughs> question for you guys now, let me know in the comments, why do you think that is? There are a couple things to look at. The Edelbrock combination had a bigger camshaft, 235 versus 228. That's a pretty sizable difference. Um, you know, change in lift as well and change in duration. So the camshaft, what do you guys think? How much power is, how much power is the camshaft alone? How much power is the camshaft alone worth? The other thing that's different here is we have different induction systems on these motors. The, the AFR205 heads are certainly the equal and probably would flow more and offer more power than the, than the Edelbrock 185 heads. The 185 heads, both of the heads have more than enough flow to easily support this power level. We're talking about 600 horsepower heads on 450 horsepower motors. So the cylinder head flow, I don't think is an issue with either one of them. I think either one of them will, will make the power. So I, I think we're kind of <laughs> a net zero there. Both of them will support that. And if anything, the airflow head should probably be a little bit better. Would definitely ultimately support more power. But 
In addition to the camshaft, the other thing we need to think about is the induction system. The TrickFlow R intake manifold has never been a favorite of mine every time I've ever tested. It has not performed the way that I thought it should, you know, with lots of high RPM power and stuff, and it just didn't do that. And I'm going to show you. And so I think the induction system is definitely part of the problem here or part of the difference. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our... Um, Go ahead and get rid of our big bang motor and I, I ended up running the Edelbrock combination both carbureted and EFI and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's what happened when I compared the EFI version of this motor to the carbureted version. Take a look. So we can see I ran this thing with the Edelbrock RPM2 EFI system, and it's not the same as the TrickFlow R that we'd run on the other version, but it gives us kind of an idea. I think the two would be comparable. What I would expect is the TrickFlow R maybe could make a little bit more power at the top, but in this RPM range, I think that this RPM2, I've run this manifold a lot and it always works fairly well, but you can see compared to our, you know, run of the mill kind of dual plane RPM air gap carburetor, the RPM2 EFI intake manifold made a lot less power, it made 432 horsepower versus 460. Even peak torque was down by a little bit from 434 to 424, but it basically made, you know, less power. So this kind of <laughs> lends credence to the fact that I think that the TrickFlow R manifold probably was holding back the combination on the Big Bang motor. I think we could do much better in terms of EFI or much better in terms of intake manifold or, or induction systems, even if we were to run like a blow through carburetor. But here's what I'm thinking. Uh, obviously, the, I think the camshaft definitely, you know, there's some power there. I think the induction system, definitely some power there. I think we're good on the, on the cylinder heads, as I mentioned. But what I'm planning on doing is I think that the best bet is probably to put a Holly High Ram. Two reasons. One, I haven't tried one yet, and I think it would be cool to try it. Um, it will also allow me... <clears throat> to maybe soften up the torque number down low, which is where we tend to hurt connecting rods. We kind of, you know, lots of torque tends to break things. So if we can push, uh, you know, power production higher in the RPM range, make a little less torque, a little more horsepower, that's what the Big Bang is all about. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I will keep testing. Let me know in the comments what you think. How can we make the NAEFI combination on the 351 even better?